Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this new support today. It's January 22nd, 2013. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube, djarko2012, and my backup is 2013, which I'm not sure if I'll ever get back up and running and able to download to or upload to. We left off with this Al Algeria BP siege saying that militants trained in jihadi camps in Libya, again, not a big surprise, but it says, uh, and not a big surprise that there was blonde haired, blue eyed. Uh, terrorists along with the Islamists um, uh, uh, carrying that thing out. We have Saharan Mast, the Tureg rebels and terrorism and the Maghreb or Maghrebi uh, spillover. So the crisis affecting Mali and southern Algeria is only the latest phase in a long pattern of conflict. The often nomadic Saharan Tureg with populations spreading far beyond northern Mali have never had a stable relationship with the more settled populations to the south. They have been, rebelli they have been in rebellion or on the verge of it for the most, most of the 22 years in the past, and Libya as well as Algeria played a disruptive supporting role in the course of that troubled period. It goes on here and it says that uh, Mali and neighboring Niger, or both have been wracked by a series of rebellions, largely Tureg, uh, 90 to 95, 2007, 2009, and a mix of Tureg and Islamic extremists in 2012, 2013. Tureg grievances have ranged from greater freedom from central governments based along the Niger River to the south, increasingly in Mali, demands for outright autonomy or independence. So this article has a lot of, uh, I, I think, kind of disinformation, uh, Western slant on it. So you can go in there and check it out and read it yourself. New Islamic Salafit uh, challenges Western Crusaders. So again, you don't have to agree with this. Uh, you can go in there and check it out. It gives a lot of history in the background of the area. Um, but it says this week marks the second anniversary of the birth of the Arab Spring, which began uh, basically, you know, in Tunisia. He fled to Saudi Arabia after a month of protest against his rule. Goes on here, and the U.S. and Europe directly and clandestinely encouraged this revolutionary fever with the naive expectation that these countries could be pacified by evolving into European-style welfare states. Unfortunately for the West, these people have a common heritage as a series of Salafite empires. Uh, date from 622 A.D. to 1258 A.D., or most powerful, wealthy, and cultured nation on earth. Arab Spring revolutionaries understood it. Uh, it took 200 years for Islamic forces to defeat Crusaders. They have demonstrated by invading Mali and attacking Algeria that they are embarking on a protracted war of liberation to reestablish Salafit of the Moors to control the North Africa and the Middle East and Southern Europe. It goes on here and it says that uh, that is why the beginning of the Arab Spring is so momentous. Tunis sits on the ruins of ancient Carthage, which under Hannibal 218 BC marched 38,000 infantry, 8,000 cavalry, 37 war elephants over the Alps and almost conquered Rome. The people of Tunis, Morocco, Algeria, and Libya are called the Maghreb and referred to as the Moors. The Arab Spring heralds the new rise of a new war liberation to reestablish the Salafate of the Moors. So it's a good chance that the Western powers, of course, uh, are using these people to get what they want to, like we said, I mean, even France is calling it, we're going to basically recolonize and establish their own um, uh, uh, colonies, I guess, in northern Africa and that. So they're, they're using them to do that, but then they're going to, you know, basically get rid, and they're going to use this excuse of these people, what they're trying to do, um, after using them as a way to go in and get rid of them. So it's pretty, pretty fancy strategy there. Finishing up, we have the Arab Spring follows three generations of revolutionary jihadism led by Salafist Muslims from the Maghreb and Egypt who are striving to expel all foreign influences and create a new worldwide Islamic Salafate. The Salafist movement was encouraged and financed by Americans and Europeans because of their willingness to tenaciously battle and even conduct suicide attacks to defeat the Russians in Afghanistan and Serbs in ba Bosnia. But it goes on here and it says Al-Qaeda Salafists turned against their Western allies with the 9-11 terrorist attacks in the U.S., bombings across the U.S. wars. Again, you have to take it for what it's worth, right? I, I think it was a Zionist attack by Israel itself. So, you know, there's a lot of information out there that you just have to try to read between the lines, you know, history and that. Clinton says the uh, hostage situation in Algeria is an act of terror. So I kind of laughed when I heard that statement as they are the terrorists, right, fighting another type of terrorist so but I guess it I guess it simplifies it for people who can't you know really think too much and just uh, 
watch television all the time and get their news from there. So, but I don't know what's up the Coke bottles and uh, you know how she is her health and that. But uh, she's still out there fighting the fight for the Crusaders and and for the Zionists and that. Uh, another article you can go in there and check it out. Links will be posted. More blood on Hillary Clinton's head. Apparently, the Algerian government warned that this type of catastrophe in Libya uh, would be inevitable if Western powers intervened to overthrow the government of Libya. They even said, please don't intervene in Libya or you'll create another Iraq on the border. And another individual, an Algeria expert, founder of the North African Risk Consulting uh, advises investors in the region, says, uh, quote, and then please don't intervene in Mali or you'll create a mess on our uh, other border. The result of the U.S. government's intervention in Libya provided terrorist groups with more weapons than anything done by the two-bit offenders prosecuted for, quote, material support of terrorism, end quote, in the past decade. If Hillary Clinton cannot be indicted for, quote, military support for terrorism, end quote, then there is no justice. Panetta, Leon Panetta, Defense Department vows U.S. revenge against al-Qaeda after Algeria siege. Al-Qaeda not actually involved, but Panetta says attacks prove, uh, attack proves need to fight back. All right, so the good guys and the bad guys, it's that simple, right? Al-Qaeda wasn't actually behind the hostage siege in Algeria, which ended with the deaths of at least three Americans and a lot of other foreign and domestic workers. It wasn't even the loosely re related Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb through the attackers uh, said they did it on their behalf. Still, Leon Panetta insisted that the attack proved that Al-Qaeda committed is committed to creating terror wherever they are and vowed retaliation against them for the incidents. Just some basic information you've probably seen in the mainstream media. We have French military keeps up airstrikes in Mali. This group behind Algeria siege threatens more attacks. There was uh, 81 people that were reported dead, including 32 Islamic militants after the hostage situation. Something interesting that I found was from McClatchy, January 21st, Islamists uh, militants or Islamists recruiting children to bolster their numbers in Mali. So they go in there and they give you a nice uh, story about it. But what's really interesting is I have a memory that you know goes back and I can remember things from you know a couple months ago, a couple of years ago, and I remember this article: Obama waves sanctions on nations that use child soldiers. October first, twenty twelve. U.S. President Obaka, Barack Obama issued a new executive order last week to fight human trafficking, touting this regime's handling of the issue. He says, uh, when a little boy is kidnapped, turned into a child soldier, forced to kill or be killed, that's slavery, Obama said in a speech at the Clinton Global Initiative, is barbaric and it is evil and has no place in civilized world. Now as a nation, we have long rejected such cruelty. So, But for the third year in a row, Obama has waived almost all U.S. sanctions that would punish certain countries that use child soldiers, upsetting many in the human rights community. So that right there, when I saw that back in October, when I was covering the leading, the buildup to this Mali invasion and, and, and operation, I knew that something was cooking right in the back burner, and that was one of the big ones. So Panetta, U.S. backing of France, and this just goes to show you that they want this to happen. They want the Islamists to do what they're doing. They're just using it. They're co-opting it. They're playing into their hands, the Western hands. Panetta says U.S. backing of France and Mali is a model for the future of wars. That's pretty interesting, right? That, uh, that comment, U.S. backing of France in Mali is the model for future, your, future wars. So this would uh, seem to bring leading from behind to a brand new level. It goes on here and it says that the kind of logistical assistance that the U.S. is providing France could serve as a model for future military assistance to international partners. Our willingness, this is a quote, our willingness and ability to help other countries like France uh, be able to go after al-Qaeda in the Maghreb, I think is the kind of model that you're going to see in the future. So this is the model of the future. Is Mali the next Afghanistan? That's what they say. Or ask. But um, they're talking about, uh, it, you know, we're just talking about Il Algeria's military leaders and that saying that, you know, don't attack Libya. It's going to it's gonna be like having an Iraq uh, on our doorstep. And then uh, they're asking, this is going to be, this is going to be like Afghanistan. Well, we already heard that, what, France was even saying, this is going to be a long war, right? Long, drawn-out war like Afghanistan. So I guess it is. That's what they want. They're already getting that, you know, drawing the, the, the similarities between it. The mainstream media is to get that in people's minds, that this is going to be a long, drawn-out battle, possibly. Taliban response to Prince Harry, it's not a game. It's very, very real. 
So it goes on here and it says that, um, well, he said, it's a joy for me because I'm one of those people who loves playing PlayStation and Xbox, the 28-year-old said. So with my thumbs, I like to think I'm probably quite useful. Taliban leaders have fired back at Prince Harry over the royal comments, royal's comments that piloting a helicopter in Afghanistan where he says he killed insurgents during the, his recent tour of duty is like playing a video game. Co-piloted an Apache helicopter during his 20-week tour. So it goes on here and it says, This statement is not even worth condemning. It's worse than that. A Taliban spokesman said to the London Telegraph, quote, To describe the war in Afghanistan as a game demeans anyone, especially a prince who is supposed to be made of better things, end quote. Pretty crazy. Two comments is one, and of course, you know, that's pretty interesting. And to use video games as a comparison to get people ready for drone wars, having even children operating these drones and, and, and killing people and, and having the disconnect between them. But also what? I just made a comment about how, you know, they're, you know, was he going to be like a sacrificial lamb or something like that? There's some out there to get killed. And I almost felt bad for him. And now after that, I kind of, re- uh, um, I kind of don't feel bad for him at all, right? So Prince Harry targeted Afghan civilians in cowardly air attacks. Says a political analyst, says British uh, Prince Harry's hunting Afghans from the air during his Afghan mission in the southern province of Helmand bears no resemblance to the way a member of a royal family ought to act. He says Prince Harry is a jackal. He's planning to hunt Afghans from the air, but he was about to be hunted himself in the military base in Helmand when the Mujahideen attacked the base. He was looking for a hole to hide. So this is not the way a prince should act. A prince should be really different. He's pretending to act like a prince, but unfortunately he's not. And because uh, hunting for poor Afghans from an airplane is not a man's way to behave, in order for Prince Harry to say things like that, uh, he can hunt Afghans from the air. If he really is a prince, he should face the Afghans face to face and fight them. So we heard about Germany becoming a big military global power. Uh, recently, last month or two, Obama inaugural speech says U.S. to maintain global military presence. Obama declared an end to a decade of war but pledged to maintain the militaristic U.S. empire. He declared misleadingly that a decade of war is now ending, in the quotes, while pledging to maintain America's superpower status through a global military presence. America, this is a quote, America will remain the anchor of strong alliances in every corner of the globe and will, we will renew uh, those institutions that extend our capacity to manage crises abroad. Oh, crisis management, right? They create it, of course. For no one has a greater stake, economic stake, in a peaceful world, a world that of sovereign people that have capitulated, than its most powerful nation or corporation. I have a funny little headline from January 21st. Obama looking forward, in quotes, to working with Natiano in 2013. In New Year's, New Year's note, did President assume Prime Minister will win election? Or was he just sending a routine greeting? Well, from the 22nd of January, 2.41 uh, Central Standard Time, Natiani's party wins, but it's surprisingly close. So exit polls say a more moderate rival gained ground. So Israeli teachers paid for military recruitment, it says. It says that Israel is encouraging and financing a new form of patriotism by offering bonuses to high school teachers who succeed in motivating students to do their army service move has sparked a wave of criticism of the Ministry of Education. Israel removes new Palestinian protest camp. The Israeli army has removed a Palestinian protest encampment of four tents in a building on the construction near a village in the occupied West Bank, or you could say colonized West Bank. So it goes on here and it says that uh, on Sunday night the army issued invasion removal orders to the encampment saying three of the tents in the buildings were on land owned by Israel. We have Israel extending West Bank barrier to block Palestinians from more land. They will move entire, the entire wall in Palestinian village. So it goes on here and it says, Natiano promises to seize the E1 region of the occupied West Bank for new settlements. Outgoing Defense Minister Barak has announced that they were rerouting the West Bank separation fence to totally encircle the Palestinian village of Al Zaim, which previously was only had an exit through E1. Historically, the tiny village would have done most of its training with East Jerusalem, but Israel has already erected a wall on the Jerusalem side of the village with a military checkpoint to keep Palestinians from entering the city. Israel's arresting babies now, it says. The Israeli army arrested a Palestinian woman and her 18-month-old baby along with several other Palestinians when they tried to reach their own land in southern Hebron Hills to work their crops. Among those arrested was an infant, a 3-year-old and 8-year-old man. And lastly, 
Palestinians left out of Obama's swearing in and address mix up. Oops. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.